and we're going and we're live everywhere. All right. Hello. My... Hello. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another Eric's Drink Whiskey Sunday Evening Sipping. Sunday Evening Sipping. Um, if you saw our post earlier today, we are talking about maybe one of the most important parts of whiskey. Um, well, like the second most important part, aside from what actually goes in the bottle, what goes on the bottle? Um, because once upon a time, you could put anything you wanted right here. Uh, but we are chatting a little bit about deciphering that and some of the common tricks of the trade to uh, kind of smoozle some things through, if I may use that word this early in the evening. What, what was that? Schmoozle? Sh Smoozle? Schmoozle? That's, uh, I, I, it felt right. I'll let, I'll let you roll with it. All right. Anyway, uh, so. Learn us a thing or two, Mr. Simpson. All right. Um, for those who are on, uh, we're just going to go over some, uh, some basic overviews of labeling and what, uh, what is considered uh proper ways to label and whatnot, legalities, and then we'll go over to does it really matter and um, and see how that goes over. So um, this topic I chose was brought up by a certain person um, out in the interwebs, and he made the it statement. Uh, it wasn't Jason me, was it? Said, No, it was not you. What's up, oh, okay. Jason? He made the statement that you should not buy these whiskeys if it does not have the state of distillation written somewhere on the bottle. And it got me thinking, and I was going back through some of my bottles, and like, hmm, I have some that don't have the state of distillation. Um, really? So there are actually, and just diving through some TTB stuff, it is actually a federal law to show um, where the bottle was distilled. Um, not the distillery, but but the state of distillation. Like it doesn't necessarily have to say Barstown, Kentucky, but you know this it should say distilled in Kentucky. And a way that they have been, some places have been getting around that is saying, you know, produced or bottled by. But apparently, it is called the it is called the um, state of distillation clause, and it was founded, uh, I believe, it was in the '30s or so. Um, but anyway. They basically were having an uh, an issue where um, they were having they're having a problem with the bl with blendings of bourbon, and they couldn't find actually where the stuff came from. So they pretty they you know put that clause in there so they could figure out okay well it, if it was Kentucky then we can kind of pin it down to there and we know you know a little bit about where it came from. Um, but for the most part. There, that was the stuff they were having issue with because they were getting stuff from Illinois, stuff from Louisiana, blah, 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 and just blending them and then selling it. And there was nothing showing where actually the whiskey came from. Um, you know, that was Talk not, ne yourself. not necessarily tied to the Bottled and Bond Act, uh, but a good law that was on hand. And there was a huge mishap in you know 2008 2012 where a lot of distilleries were filing civil suits against these places mostly ndps non-distilling producers who were creating uh products and hiding where it came from and legally you can't do that um uh, one way that they've been able to skirt such things is the signing of an nda and it is more often not done than 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 not. Double negative. Um, there's not that many NDAs out there, <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense. A lot of people are just not saying where it came from. Um, so my prime example um, of, of, of a right way. Um, so Nulu. Nulu, we have this courtesy of Drink Good Liquor. Uh, Nulu is... We're going to go off the label here. Nulu, single barrel. So it's one barrel. Straight bourbon whiskey. That means it's at least two years old. It's non-chill filtered. Um, so it says, 
117.2 proof, age is 4 years 10 months, the barrel number, the bottle number, and then we look on the back and it says distilled by MGPI of Indiana. Perfect. So Nulu did not make this, but MGP did. But we know where it came from. And track exactly and, where it came from. Now that we've chatted about this before. There's a there's a lot of especially up and coming distilleries that are using Midwest grain products, either distillate or just straight up bourbon. Mm -hmm. to kind of keep the cash flow coming in while their own distillate ages. Yep. Um, I have to give it to Prohibition Craft Spirits. They're the, the folks who crank out Nulu. Like, the label on the back of the bottle tells the whole story. You know, this is hand-selected MGP while our own distillate ages. We hope you enjoy it. Like, mad props for that. Like, they're not trying to pass it off as their own distillate or anything like that. Right. Um, so I'm going to bring up one of my, uh, an, uh, an example of some meandering wrongdoings and, um, and a lot of people think it's just the little people that do it, but it's the big boys that do it too. And I'm going to brought found, it to you. I found from one. My folks at Diageo. Oh. So here I have a bottle of Barter House, Kentucky bourbon. That's what that says. Always crafted to the highest standards Kentucky bourbon whiskey. In traditional American oak, uh, this is, it was aged 20 years in traditional American oak barrels, bottled with pride in Tullahoma, Tennessee, for a distinctive and delightful character. All right, well, that told us about nothing, that we just bottled it in Tennessee. It said it was Kentucky bourbon, but it didn't say distilled in Kentucky. The only thing it says <laughs> on the back here is hand-bottled in Tullahoma. That's all we got. Which and we, we only, know where they <laughs> we know where they bottled it. There's only one Diageo distillery in Tullahoma, Tennessee, and that's Dickel. Right. So that being said, I know where this stuff came from. Um, oh, okay, even better here. So it says produced by Orphan Barrel Whiskey Distilling Company in Tullahoma, Tennessee. See that keyword? Produce. That don't mean shit. So that's, that's nothing. <laughs> So, and it's not straight bourbon either. It's not. Uh, well, it is by the press release that's on their website. Gotcha. However, places like Orphan, or places like Diageo, thanks, Todd, uh, places like T uh, like Diageo uh, get away with horse shit like this because they don't have to file certain, uh, under certain things. So, gotcha. it's, a, it's, a, it's a cheaper, it's a cheaper filing. Um, so, according to the press release and everything that I have researched on this particular bottle, I know where it came from and I know what it is. But that's for me doing a shit ton of research and me being a nerd. Modern consumer don't know anywhere what this came from. Right. So, I was just thinking, uh, <laughs> talking about the distilling. Um, so, I've got my bottle of Jefferson's Ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking at the sticker because I was like, oh, it's going to say distilled in blah, bottled in blah. No, this one actually only says bottled for so-and-so-and-so-and-so -and -so -and -so Louisville, Kentucky, um, which is obviously a no-no because you got to list who it's made for. Now, the I've got the Oak Project, and it actually says bottled for McLean and Kine, Louisville, Kentucky, distilled in Indiana. So... This one's this one's not breaking the law. The other one is technically like. See, I think I think with uh, Jefferson's might actually have the NDA um, because from what I know about Jefferson's, they're a blend of a whole bunch of stuff. Like that's all they do is blend, and so they don't they don't have uh, like unless they actually know it, they don't have a country uh, or a state of origin. Okay, so like, so like the the ocean may be either a hodgepodge or have an NDA strapped to it. The wood experiment is MGP distillate. Right. Fun. See how much you can learn by looking at the labels. Yep, yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's okay. So here's here's a here's an example of an MD uh, NDP non distilling producer. So. Um, Probably some of you out there have never seen this. Uh, it's kind of an older, uh, older bottling, but it's called Medley's Private Stock, age ten years. 
It's like an OG looking bottle. Um, it says dead set on the front distills in Kentucky. Bam. Right there. Um, what else does it say? Kentucky's a big state, y'all. <laughs> so, but let's let's keep reading this label. Bottled by the Charles Medley Distillery in Fairfield, California. Okay. I know where this whiskey came from because I know where Charles Medley sources. But that's me being a nerd. But they did it correctly. It said, it said distilled in Kentucky. So I know this whiskey came from a Kentucky distillery. And this, see the other one. The other one actually says Bardstown. That's how. I, that's how I know. The twelve-year-old. The twelve-year-old says Bardstown, Kentucky. I know this is Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill. Yeah. <laughs> because this stuff predates like some of the the newer stuff that's coming out in Bardstown. So I'm, this is. I know this is Heaven Hill. Um. I'll jump into what I think is one of the the sneakiest. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with sourcing because we know where it's made. They're compliant and all that. That's one of my favorite go-to bourbons. Wild Turkey 101. Yeah. Hey, our, our T-Dubs just got the 101 rye in the 750s. All right. Yeah. Shit's good. Um, so Wild Turkey 101, everything is above board. Like there's no tomfoolery. Kentucky <clears throat> straight bourbon whiskey. Now on the back, they, they pull a little sneaky on you. In this little narrative here, they talk about... With a high right content, this iconic bourbon is perfectly aged for up to six to eight years in American oak barrels with the deepest char for more character. So they say six to eight. And oh. <laughs> commonly accepted, it's at least six to eight with some older stuff in it. But they also don't say it. Right. And and we've talked, we've talked uh, earlier that uh, saying six to eight is a bullshit age statement. <laughs> it doesn't actually mean that. <laughs> Right. It is. That's a that, that's another way for them to get it. See, yeah, every even even the good ones do it. You know, it's it's a uh, what what's that old saying? If you're not cheating, you're not you're not winning, <laughs> or you're not cheating, you're not yeah. trying. That's right. Now, it is a straight bourbon. It's non age stated. We know it's at least four years old. I mean, that's good enough. You can you can taste Wild Turkey 101 and know that it's older than four years, or, or at least most of the stuff in it is. Um, that's just kind of one of the little fun tricks of the trade. I brought a, I brought another bottle that was a uh, wild turkey related that, that has to do with this labeling forgiven. Oh, that's the, the half rye half. Yep. Rye. So wild turkey forgiven blend of bourbon and rye straight whiskeys, a limited edition, small batch blend of bourbon and rye straight whiskeys distilled by wild turkey distilling company in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Pretty standard there. You know what else? You know what it doesn't say? It doesn't was, say that this is a straight whiskey. I was halfway paying attention because it's not. It's blended. It's not. Yeah, it's a blend of straight whiskeys, which they said, but it doesn't. But but it does not say that it doesn't say Wild Turkey Forgiven, so and so Kentucky straight whiskey. Right. Well, it's like you look at anything High West does. High West is a blend, um, and you're going to have, like, their double rye is a blend of ryes. Their prairie bourbon is a blend of bourbons. So you're you're gonna, not going to have that straight bourbon on there. Um, I think Old Elk takes it a step further, and they, theirs says, which it doesn't mean anything, blended straight bourbon whiskey. M M M most are <laughs> because it's a blend of straight bourbon whiskey so i right. mean it's like johnny walker saying blended malt or like blended single malt scotch or whatever it does on some of the higher end ones like it it's it's just a name it's, it doesn't Scotland, have Scotland's any... a little different or scotland's a little different too yeah know? Scott. yeah Scotland, <laughs> but like yeah that one that is it doesn't really mean anything it just yeah, makes it yeah. feel good I, it was like that one person I was uh, I was watching on on Facebook there, and it said, uh, um, "I only drink I, I don't drink uh, I don't drink okay. blended whiskey," <laughs> and it just it just it blew me blew me away. I'm like, "Well, you only drink single barrels? Is, is, that, is that what you mean?" Because right. most most damn whiskey is blended. 
Well, it's like, you know, you know unless you've got a single barrel, what does small batch mean? Nothing. More than what, more how, than one. <laughs> how, how big is how big is a batch? Is it two barrels? Is it two hundred barrels? As it, it doesn't mean anything. It just you you could theoretically make something a single barrel, call it small batch, and not call it a single barrel, and you'd be correct. Yeah, I mean it's like <laughs> it's like peeing your pants. It, it's a warm feeling for you, but you're the only one who knows it. Mm. Um, I I'm drinking tonight actually for. Ooh. What was that? That's for, that new loop. <laughs> for a for a whiskey kind of nerd who's doing this type of stuff and wants to get, you know, the baseball card stats as we're talking about this stuff. Um, one brand that just like knocks it out of the park with their bottle story is New Riff. Um, this is their this is their uh, bottled and bond Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, um, hundred proof. Um, I, like it's it's got everything you need on the bottle. It's you, you bottled in bond without chill filtration. Um, it's sour mash, which that's you know good for them. Um, right. On the on the back it says aged at least four years, and it actually goes ahead and gives you the damn mash bill: sixty five corn, thirty rye, five malted barley, um, and then you also get a nice little distilled uh, season up here. I love that. Like that's awesome. <laughs> like it's all right here. You don't need you don't need Google. You don't need anything else to figure out what's going on with this whiskey. DJ, roll tide to you, brother. Um, thought it was good. Um, kind of hard to kind of hard to say anything because of uh, uh, you know Alabama on Alabama and one on twos and twos on ones and but bring on Bryce Young and we're gonna take it to the house for number nineteen. But um. So let's before we dive into before we dive into uh, to scotch. Oh Lord! <laughs> yeah, before we dive into scotch, now the next question on this transparency deal on the whiskey because I really think that the Hubba Baloo has come about because the whiskey was subpar. This is my psychological bearing on this. I don't think that half these places that didn't put where it got distilled would catch nowhere near as shit if the whiskey was good. Right. Well, it's like you don't, I've, I've not heard one damn thing about like Jefferson's Ocean being crucified for not having a, a place of distillation on there. Right. What's well, going to be like Uncle Pete's shit liquor that gets but, um, a bad rap? A long, t uh, a long time ago, they um, one of the one of the biggest like bourbon farces. There was a uh, there was two limited releases of uh, Jefferson's that were. An 18 year and I think a 21 year, and oh. it says, and it said, well, listen here, <laughs> it says on the on the little side label there, it says, aged in Stitzel Weller barrels. Okay. So if you were if, if you were into bourbon porn, what would that tell you? That means I'd be about to blow my load over some pappy juice. Da damn, that's that's 18 year old pappy, and it ain't it it's it cheaper. <laughs> it's i mean as it did it call itself like but it was bourbon it didn't say it was finished or anything did it no 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 it it it, it, it was it did not say finished it did, it just said aged in stencil weller barrel that's all it said so, i mean <laughs> it said kentucky straight bourbon and, and then the side thing said aged in stencil weller, stencil weller barrel so we talking like 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 finished? Are we talking like they bought their leftover cooperage when they shut down? Like don't, don't know. <laughs> again, what up, John? I, I guess it's a it's a warm fuzzy feeling for you and your <laughs> you and yourself. Sean, if uh, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about uh, label legalities and whatnot, and does it matter? That's I mean. I think it does. I think it does matter for the sake of the um, the austerity that is America's true spirit. Right. I mean, there's a lot of great looking bottles out there now too, and I mean, I hate this. 
I've spent a lot of money on bourbon to figure out that I like a few certain things. And at this point, because I don't have the room and I really don't want another bottle of an experiment, I want to know that what I'm getting is good. So, I mean, like, if I see, like, blended, I mean, I'm... I'll I'll give Scotch some leeway because I I know the legalities of it. If I see blended bourbon or shit like that, like I I stay away from it. Like that's all. That's all. Hold another thing. Uh, Sean Sean Farrell says, "Oh God, legal issues." <laughs> this is the stuff I nerd out to, Sean. <laughs> but it's like if if I if I see Bardstown, goddamn, I don't need another bottle of Heaven Hill in my cabinet. That's like I was. That's like I. I found that that bottle of uh, punch, Puncher's Choice. Puncher, Puncher's Choice. Puncher's Choice. What is it? Um, pa- uh, Buffalo Springs Powder Springs. Whatever T Dubs. That's House. yeah. That's Total Wine's. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Bar- or Heaven Hill product. Uh, yeah, yeah. But at Puncher's Choice, I was like, never seen this because it's in like a, it's in like those that fucking like diplomat uh, or diplomatico like rum bottle. But, I, but I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh. Kentucky Straight Bourbon, 90 proof, Puncher's Choice. I was like, how have I never heard of this? This is four-year-old whiskey that I look on the back. And it was like, produced in bottle by the uh, Puncher's Choice Distillery in Bars, Cal, Bars Kentucky. Kentucky. And I'm like, the fuck? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, this is like $28. I'm going to buy Evan Williams Bald and Bond. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, I don't want anything else from Bardstown. I don't want anything else from Frankfurt. I know if what it, it tastes like. <laughs> yeah, I mean. If it's from Lawrenceburg, I'll I'll take it. I'll I'll take a gamble on some if it's turkey or four roses, but now uh, that being said, I haven't seen I haven't seen anything I haven't seen anything like that in an NDP bottle that was done by Buffalo Trace in a while. Um I know no. that I know that Barton does a lot. I know because yeah. they're, they're both on my sides, right? But I know Barton does a lot, but Buffalo Trace itself I'm not too sure. They're probably a little more of a uh, discreet character. I'd say probably Turkey's the same. I don't think Turkey's handing Turkey their shit out and letting people talk about it. Tur- yeah, Turkey. I don't. I think there was only there was like a brief period that like I think it was when Jim Beam's shit like burned down. Yeah, and that they they helped them out, but like that's it. I don't think they. Uh, uh, the sorry, let me rephrase that. So, the only thing that Wild Turkey does, I believe, is for a group called Single Cask Nation. Is that a militia group? Could be. Uh, no, nah. there's a <laughs> there, there there's a group called Single Cask Nation, and they go to um, all these big name distilleries and and then like basically throw out a chunk of money for a choice barrel. And uh, I mean, they've got they've got a scotch, they've got, um, and, and they pretty much they pretty much tell you where it, where it comes from. Like they're they're they're, per, they're open about it, and I think that's part of the deal. But I know they had a single cast nation that was like 117 proof wild turkey. Oh, you know, um, that sounds delightful. Yeah. Before um, we jump to scotch, I got two. Well, one 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 will be a good segue. I got two bits of whiskey news. Really. Courtesy of my sister-in-law, Liz. Well, let um, us know. Who sends me this stuff. So first, um, and this was the most recent, apparently there is a glass shortage. Well, there you go. Um, the The article was actually Castle and Key bitching about not being able to get the bottles for um, whatever rye they're putting out. Slow Hand, I think, is what it's called. Slow Hand, um, Luke. But uh, <laughs> it's my strong hand. <laughs> But so, yeah, um, apparently, especially if they're sourcing from, like, Europe, it's uh, getting increasingly harder to get glass. So, um, you know, us living in Florida, not yet. That's rather George these days. We're getting there, Michael. We're getting there. Um, so living in Florida, Liz and I have this great idea we're going to – get some sand and, you know, do what it takes to make it glass, which is heating it to 3000 degrees. Um, and when we're going to start a bottle company, so be on the lookout for us. 
I'm just kidding. No, I thought that was interesting because, you know, if the price of your bottle goes up, your price of your bourbon is going to go up two, three dollars, depending on, um, you know, where you're getting your bottles from. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a, that's a good point. And um, yeah, I don't know the uh, the yeah the yeah, obviously it'll help. Obviously the the big boys will be will be okay, but. Uh, well, because they've probably got bottles on hand. Well, now I look at you know. I've um, seen I, I've seen the damn Blanton's people bottling shit. That's just that, damn out of here. I mean, I I I look at bottles and I mean Knob Creek's fine for days. There's plenty of those bottles around. I'm sure at the bottoms of rivers and creeks all around the South. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you recycle. But no, uh, you see enough, and especially with all these craft distilleries coming online, there's some very common bottle shapes that um, that you see, and it's really the label that makes the difference. We were looking at, what was it, Nulu and the Obtanium Light Whiskey. That's the same bottle. Um, my um, uh, two two star two star bourbon and uh, and the uh, aforementioned old uh, Weller Special Reserve uh, that, yeah. that line uh, that total line you know total line sources two star from Barton you know and that's and that's a Sazerac company so where do you think that bottle shape came from you know? Yeah you know and I've got uh, a craft distillery in North Georgia that's the same exact bottle as the Old Forester Whiskey Row series that same kind of yeah. Um, so it's just kind of cool. Like, I mean, yeah, like a bottle shortage is scary and God forbid, I don't want to pay more than, you know, I already do for bourbon, but they, I feel like there's plenty of bottles where, out where there. Do you, where do you think Medley sources their bottles from? <laughs> looks, looks a little like Elmer T. Lee to me. <laughs> right. Well, it's like beams not hurting for any bottles. They put all their shit in the same bottle. So, right. Um, so um, diving into uh, diving into scotch for a little oh, bit. That's Go my ahead. next. That's my next piece of news, and you'll enjoy this one. I'm ac- I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Our uh, one of our favorite Isla distilleries, Lafroig, is coming out with a ten year sherry finished. Oh yes, I saw that. Um, I'm in a I'm in a Pete Head Facebook group. <laughs> And one of my one of my friends saw that, it, but it's going to be a national release. Um, unknown. A lot of the a lot of those like normal finish stuff they do is kind of like is duty free. Well, um, like wasn't it wasn't it already? Because like Lagavulin and Sherry, but like not really. No, Lafroy Le- Lafroy Le- normally isn't. Um, Le- Lafroy. And here's here's some vast bourbon or whiskey and bourbon knowledge here. Lafroig usually sources their whiskey their their barrels from Maker's Mark. Lafroig's Beam Suntory, isn't it? Bingo. <laughs> See, I'm so, I'm picking up I'm picking up I'm Rain Man's rubbing off on me. And speaking of Beam Suntory. <laughs> My newest, uh, my, my newest uh, bottom shelf or review to come, um, McClellan's. I heard about this on a uh, on a Facebook page. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen it. I just never get the time of day. But it is uh, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Uh, so it it did come from one distillery that we know. Okay. 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 It says distilled and bottled in Scotland by the McClellan Limited Glasgow um, Company. Um, so that's hogwash. Let's, now let's, let's check let's the back. Let's throw, throw a lot of Scottish words together. We'll get them with that. Right. So now let's check the back. Imported by Beam Suntory Import Company in Chicago, Illinois. So now that we know that this was imported by Beam Suntory, so that narrows it down to two distilleries in Isla. Lafroy <laughs> and Balmore. Balmore's, Balmore's Beam Suntory? Yep. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, Lafroy said, uh, Lafroy says that, you, that it is not theirs, and Balmore just didn't comment. <laughs> so, no comment. Ipso facto, for those in Latin... It is Young Balmore. 
Bal I, I still want to grab a bottle of Balmore just to, because it's the oldest. Is it the oldest distillery in Scotland, period, or the oldest Isla distillery? I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. I can Google that shit. But no, um, what you were asking about Le, um, about Lafroig. So their only finished stuff is in their like, es like especially done things like the triple wood, the quarter cast, the so and so and so. -so. Their natural, and... yeah, their natural stuff is not necessarily finished. Lagavulin is, but they don't necessarily they don't say how long it's been sherried or blah 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 blah. blah but because you uh, don't have to. Because you don't have to. Um, but they normally put their normal stuff in a sherry barrel, the 16 year, I guess you could say. Hold, bear with me. I'm reading on the iPad. And it's all right. I'm I like old. looking at your ear on Instagram. I'm old. Oh, look. Zach, uh, Zach from T Dubs is watching. The distillery, which lies on the southeastern shore of Loch Indal, is one of the oldest in Scotland and said to have been established in 1779. Well, oh, if it ain't go. if it ain't the oldest, it's one <laughs> of the. If it ain't if you ain't first, you're last. I don't give two shits about you. Well, it ain't the youngest. <laughs> All right, bear with me, America, for a glass change because I can't pour scotch in a bourbon glass. Anyway, so I'm going to dive into Scotch legalities because they're a little less strict than <laughs> than bourbon. They don't care. They don't care. I now, mean, they do. What we talked about earlier is just with bourbon. We're not talking about rye whiskey or wheat whiskey or American whiskey. Just we were just talking about bourbon. We can dive into the rabbit holes of the other stuff, you know, on some on a longer uh well, Ryan, Ryan, done out video. Rye doesn't me. have to be in a new in a new chart of the barrel. That's true, but but other than that, rye kind of follows the same nameology of straight right. versus non straight <laughs> and all that. Uh, thank you, there, um, um, detective, uh, detective um, uh, Dalla Pop Scalias. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, don't, don't you remember the, you, the Boondock Saints? He said, uh, thank you, Detective Dollapop Scalios. And he said, oh, you know, there we got that right. And he goes, all right, that's me because I'm an expert in nameology. <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> Phrase, phraseology. <laughs> What's the symbology there? <laughs> Todd, we know Rye is good, right? We didn't, say, we didn't say we didn't say it was bad. <laughs> Rice sucks. Yeah. Each penguin shit you ask be longer. I have a I have a whole shelf of rye and I could definitely go for more. Anyway, what am I gonna finish drinking? Um you know what? Fuck it. I'm a, I haven't poured some of that medleys in a while. I am switching over to scotch because I am going straight for a blend. Ew. So um Fire away, explain us, and then I'll explain why I actually really enjoy this brand. So, Scotch is delved into um, four, three to four categories. So, you've got single malt, malt, single grain, and uh, and and then uh, Scotch whiskey, which multi grain. So, you can have. Uh, you can have a bourbon mash bill, if, as you were. No, most don't, but you can have a bourbon mash bill in Scotland, and it is called a Scotch whiskey. Single malt, right? Single malt means it was all malted barley, and from one distillery. Malt whiskey means it's all malted barley. And all single malt whiskeys blended, and that, that, that kind of get you know people kind of talk shit about the blended the blended Scotch whiskeys, but there's some that are really good. And I think we've we've talked with our buddy Charlie about that before. You know, one I, of my 
one of my old favorite ones. I, you know, my my favorite my favorite go to scotch as far as the daily scotch is that is the Naked Grouse. Naked Grouse, that was solid. Thirty five bucks. I know it's Highland Park and McAllen, so I know it came from two great you know distilleries, but it's there's it's single malt whiskey from them, and it's not bad at all. I um. That one's good. I'm a big fan of Johnny Walker. Um, I don't want to say it. I, I'll keep talking. Black and green are my personal favorites. Actually, um, black is a mystery. It doesn't specifically say who makes it or, or what it is. Um, if you ever snag a bottle of green label, though, first off, it's 15-year age stated, which is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, it actually tells you what single malt it uses so what, what what did you say what what did you say that one was johnny walker green well no like what what was the the connotation just made up a word blended malt scotch whiskey okay all right and it's and but it says it's a rich and vibrant blend of only single malt whiskey including talisker linkwood Cragmore, and colila colila Age stated, age stated 15 years, which if, if you go like starting to research these labels, um, like there's like some 18, 20 and 21 year old scotch in here, um, unless it's not stuff that they widely produce. So um, I'll join the scotch trade with you, except I'm uh, I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the triple wood. That's what she said. Triple wood. Yeah. Um, John Walker Black or, is or, also or he said we don't discriminate here. Johnny Walker Black is a blended Scotch whiskey, which means it's not all single malt. Good. Um, that, I was, was going to bring I was going to bring that up too because I I got that Clan McLeod from Drink Good Liquor, uh, and it says blended Scotch whiskey. So there's some probably corn liquor or, or something in there to. Yeah, there's there's all there's there's other grains besides malt. Yeah, is, is there an age statement on that clam McLeod? No. So, so that was so it means it's that means it's at least three years old. Right. So Johnny Walker Black, um, if it's been a while since you've seen it, is actually twelve year age stated. So while it's not all blend, it's not a blend of all single malts. It's a blend of at least twelve year old whiskeys. Um, right. which is again, nothing to shake a stick at. That's actually pretty impressive. Um, I am pouring and I don't know why I've really jumped on this brand recently. Um, scotch test dummies do a lot of compass box. Um, they've, they've dove deep with some of their limited releases. So compass box is the brainchild of, is it Diageo? Diageo. So Diageo, it's their it's their blended whiskey. Um, but what John Glasser does, uh, their master distiller or their whiskey maker, um, really it is transparency. Now this is a this is called Pete Monster. Um, it's got this horrible looking creature on it. I'll show Instagram. Petey Chode Slap. Yeah, Petey Chode Slap. Um, complex Petey smoky non chill filtered blended malt Scotch whiskey. So we know it's all barley whiskey. All single malts essentially um what i like about them is while it's not anywhere on the bottle if you're like hmm i wonder what's in compass box peat monster you can quickly google the internet um oh shit bear with me i'm gonna see if i can share my screen share screen yeah while you're while you're biding time now that I'm tasting Lafroy Triple Wood, not plastered like I did the last time, it's way better. <laughs> I don't get any fish food or 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 clay. <laughs> Hold on, let me. Top bear with smoke me. in my house. Keep keep talking amongst yourself. I will talk amongst myself. I will. I'm trying to figure Pull out how out to share. The stove. I'm trying to share my screen. With that being said, everybody that is on watching, what are we drinking tonight? Beer's fine. Tea's fine. Wine. I, 
I'm probably gonna have me a San Cristobal Revolution Stogie. Stogie. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with a giant pea chode. My stage name. I still have a one of those makers dipped sitting in my humidor. Oh, I love those things. They're so good. I just I I don't know. You get you get older and the cigars do you different. I need to teach you how to smoke. <laughs> Let's... They, they, I, I think you've said something similar to similar to me on certain things. It shouldn't be doing that to you. <laughs> Oh, how a whiskey makes my knees hurt if I drink too much of it? Yes. Well, that's just because I got bad knees. <laughs> I've got ehlers Dan's low syndrome. <laughs> like I said, at least you didn't get to pick the name. Yes. The, the Eric's drink syndrome. <laughs> Slate. Anybody out there? What are we drinking? Come on now. Let us know. Let us know. Shit, hold on. Todd, I know you ain't got to fucking go to work tomorrow, so what are you drinking? Select a window or screen to share. Oh, um, another another example of the, uh, the bourbon that we're uh, talking about. Noah's Mill is like that. Nowhere on Noah's Mill does it say that it's Kentucky Straight Bourbon. That's right. It says it on their website. Brian Alfasella, my brother, what up? Background. This is embarrassing. I thought I knew how to do this. Water tonight felt like the north end of a south horse the last few days. I believe we call that a Bag of mashed up assholes, Jason. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what we call that. Um, <laughs> glad, glad you're on with us, though. Thanks. I know Jason's have or have some issues. Uh, Old Forest, nineteen ten. Nineteen ten, Todd, not eighteen. They but glad you're, but glad you're drinking it. I'm working on you, folks. I'm trying to pull up this spirit wheel of Pete. Cubs losing just after three pitches. That's normal. Oh, I know all of my family up north aren't happy. Are they Cubs fans? Oh, God, yeah. All of my, all of my uh, um, uh, I, or my family with Megan's family, uh, they're all they're all Cubs fans. I have no affiliation to baseball, so I do, however, have a new fascination. I have uh, I have found. Uh, um, minor league baseball team names, and they're like the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> Carol- Carolina Mudcats, there's a, there's a there's a there's a me- there's a uh, uh, Montgomery Biscuits. <laughs> uh, there's another one. There's another one from Kentucky that I'm going to get, and it's got a it's got a big skull on it, like a pinata, and a big like uh like. Monopoly man mustache, and it says the the Lexican Lejandros. <laughs> it's the Lexington legend. Nice. Just realized a reason to celebrate today. One year of Southwest Florida bourbon. What up? Congratulations, Mr. Sean Farrell. Sean, Sean and I uh, got hooked up when I was trying to start a said group <laughs> in in the area and we're and he's like, Oh, I've just got Southwest Florida Bourbon Group, blah blah blah. And I'm like, How have we not met each other? <laughs> Intriguing. Got a little got a little bit of time left. Oh no, I'm trying to I'm trying to get this damn thing to work. There it is. But uh Here's to uh, what? What's the? I'm gonna bu- I'm gonna butcher this, but I'm gonna make it Eric. Something about ships. They're gonna sail and they're gonna sink. But but we're friends. Roll tide. <laughs> That's right. Anyways, I'll 
post a link to it. Um, I'll I'll throw it in the comments so you guys can see it. Um, do it on your own time. Back to what I was talking about, and I'm technologically challenged, and I can't get this damn. I'd have to quit Streamyard to get my settings to update, but whatever. So Compass Box for every whiskey that they put out um, has a like essentially a blending profile of what's in it. Um, and it tells the distillery what type of barrel it's in and kind of what flavor it adds to it. Um, so this this peat monster is three different Colilas, a Laphroaig, and a Highland. Um, so it's peaty as hell. But again, I, that's you know I appreciate that transparency in my whiskey, and it's damn delicious for sixty bucks. Oh, totally random. I was looking at this earlier. Clyde Mays Alabama style whiskey, which isn't a thing. Right. I should know. Clyde Mays Alabama style whiskey was distilled by a distillery in Illinois. <laughs> it was a whiskey, probably Peoria. I just want to know what what the hell were they doing in Alabama? <laughs> what it didn't it throw an apple cores and shit in it? Yeah, so. Uh, all of that is true. The lore of that is true, but it never became like a thing. And what and what what the what the guy did was his corn liquor was too harsh, as most corn liquor is, and so to mellow it, he was throwing apple cores in it, which made it sweeter. For fuck's sake, that, that's what it is. Bold and nasty. so they they did us uh, something similar. Uh, that's just it's. Now, are, are we I'm talking like, shit. like he ate like, ar, 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 and then like apple core or like mama made a pie and like cut the, the cores out or. I want to give you the girl shrugging emoji. Mm. <laughs> not on, sure. On, on one hand, that's not a bad idea. On the other, that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> well, it's like a. Uh... I mean, I'm not worried about it because it's in 110 proof alcohol. So yeah, like, I mean, it's it's like self cleaning, but yeah, still. The, the germs are gone. But it's just it's it. If I didn't know that, you know? <laughs> it's like um, was it? There's a oh, hold on. Let me let me go grab that bottle. Hold on. All right. There's there's a. I'll fill him in. I'll just wait. It's a good story. All right. All right. It's like there's this, um, it's either Incan or Aztec um, spirit that is, I don't, I don't know if it's just fermented or distilled, but it's like, they, these dudes chew up the corn and spit it in a bucket. So like between the corn and the amylase from your saliva and the yeast, it creates this like fermented beverage. Now, yes. There's probably enough alcohol in that to kill whatever nasty mouth bacteria you got going on. Am I trying it? No. Well, it's like I mean, if they didn't have a if they didn't have a grinder, if they weren't like smacking it with a stone, I guess that was the only way you could do it. I guess you know to, to get the enzymes also, going. God dang! Like the teeth teeth on those guys. They're all like flatter than hail <laughs> if you ever look at it. Because they're gnawing hard corn. <laughs> yeah, they're gnawing straight raw corn. <laughs> all right. Anyways. Um so bottled bottled by Conica Ridge Distillery, Auburndale, Illinois. Like Conica, C O N E C U H? Yep. So, so they put out some other stuff too. Okay. Oh, so okay. So doesn't doesn't say bottled by, or sorry, doesn't say distilled by. So here we go. Who That's makes amazing. this shit? Who makes it? If you make it, let us know. Own up to it. Yeah, I because this is hundred. Uh, yeah, this is this this is one of my wedding uh, wedding venture gifts that I got for marrying a uh, friend of ours. I want to do some. Uh, I want to do some research on this um, and get back to get back to everybody because I'm interested. I had heard this was MGP, 
but that is, you know, hearing things is. Pour a little bit more of this. Anyway, so what do we have coming up? We got got a couple a couple interesting videos. Uh, we actually have a compass box review. Um, that's actually a review of a local pick from Jigs Liquors here in Gainesville, Florida, um, which is a compass box blend um, in a single marion cask, um, and it's a sherry cask. Absolutely delicious. So I'll be on the lookout for that coming up soon. Uh, we got some more bottom shelf stories heading your way. Um, and I'm actually very excited this week to take the show on the road. Yes, sir. Um, might, have a, might have something crazy coming later. Going uh, going to the place it all started. Well, across the river from the place it all started. If, if so-and-so happens, can you, can you splice me in via phone? <laughs> A little happen, maybe. I can't remember what the cell service is like. Um, but no, so going up to visit family in southern Indiana, which is, of course, across the river from Kentucky. Um, so we're going to hit a couple of distilleries while uh, we're up there. Uh, one I'm really excited about is going back to Starlight Distillery in Borden, Indiana. Um, hoping to have a chance to talk to one of their master distillers um, and get that... Uh, Get that on the air for you guys. I think that'll be really cool uh, to hear about what they do. Um, I'm accepting shopping lists, although just know we're only checking one bag, so it may get expensive if we have to check another bag. Um, bag for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to be whoring yourself out here. <laughs> and yeah, what well, I mean, we're we're mainly up there to visit family, but uh, I am going to try to find time to pull away to at least hit like Old Forester, or, uh, the Evan Williams Still House there in downtown Louisville to. Yeah. You know, do the touristy thing and grab a bottle of that 12 year old 101 Evan Williams. Um, yes, sir, that red bottle. But <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, be flying out Thursday into uh, back to the ancestral home place, even though that's not where I'm from, it's where my dad's from. Break. <laughs> I was, I was, I was trying to say, I was trying to say, I gotta run, but I was doing the Hollywood wrap it up. We need to take a break. <laughs> okay, well, it's a good place to stop. Uh, right. I'm getting, I'm getting we, the side, I'm getting the side eye. <laughs> we've uh, we've unpacked a lot of uh, a lot of truth and a lot of BS and uh, whiskey labels. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Like, share, follow, subscribe, uh, whatever feels right. Be on the lookout for what we got going this week. Um, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.